Hello and welcome to your recipe for financial success with me, Emma, and my colleagues, Becky and Julie. In each episode, we'll be bringing you a list of ingredients to help you cook up a storm and master methods to finesse your finances. We'll be helping you expand your repertoire and hopefully teach you a few new skills along the way. So, clear the counters and get your mixing bowls ready for today's recipe. Let's get started. Thanks for bringing those cakes into the office yesterday, Emma. They were really lovely. I actually had one for my breakfast this morning. Oh, nice sweet treat in the morning. It, it was a very nice sweet treat. Nice with a cup of coffee. So instead of 11s, you've had 8s, eight, 9s eight and 10s. Exactly. <laughs> I thought my jeans were feeling a little bit tight and now I know why. I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you been making anything else this week? Actually, I've been working on a train birthday cake for my nephew this week. So. Ooh. I can't tell you what it's going to look like yet, though, because it might be an absolute disaster, so we shall wait and see. Oh, no. A, a train wreck, by any chance? Quite possibly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> boom. <laughs> that was bad, Becky. Hopefully the podcast can only get better from here. <laughs> I'm sure it will. And I think that leads us to move swiftly on, Becky. Would you like to introduce today's episode? Of course, Julie. So in today's episode, now we've got the train discussion out of the way, we're going to be talking about a staple in any financial cookbook, which is pensions. Okay, Emma, let's start off with the real basics. What is a pension? In really, really simple terms, a pension is a tax-free savings account, which would be used to produce an income when you do actually retire. You can have a pension from any age. Yes, I even mean you can pay into a pension for a child and you can keep paying into it until you reach the age of 75. But actually keeping it even more simple, today we're actually going to be talking about money purchase pensions. Whoa, Emma, I thought you said simple. What's a money purchase pension? So believe it or not, it's the simplest pension of all the different types of pensions. Basically, it can change with the stock market so it will rise and fall similar to any type of investment, Um, but it's not based on how long you've worked somewhere or the amount that you earn. So it's based on how much you put into it. So basically, the more you pay in, the more you're eventually going to get out of it. Okay. So how much do you have to pay into a pension then? There's not actually a set amount. So the more you can put in, the better. So as much as you can afford is always the right answer. But there are limits. So you can put a maximum of £40,000 per tax year, or 100% of your earnings. So if you haven't earned £40,000, say you've only earned £20,000, you could put £20,000 in. How about this though? With your pension, you get something called tax relief. The way to think of this is when you go to a supermarket and you're looking for some ingredients and you go down the home baking aisle and looking for flour and it says 20% extra free on the packaging. I don't know about you, but I like that. So a pension is is pretty similar to your 20% extra free on your packaging. So you get tax relief, a basic rate, and what that means is if you pay in £100, £125 will actually go back into your pension. But if you are a higher rate taxpayer, you could claim some more tax back when you do your self-assessment. Okay, so let me just get that, let me just think that through, make sure I've got that right in my own mind. So if I'm paying £60 a month into my pension, what we're really saying is that £75 a month is actually going into it? That's exactly right. Hmm. Okay, I get that. Cool. Earlier on, you said there was no set amount to go into your pension, but I have to pay a fixed amount into my pension each month. So how does that work? So I'm guessing, I could be wrong here, that your pension is probably one through work? Yes, it is, yeah. So I would assume that that's probably an auto-enrolment scheme that you have. Yeah, that sounds right. I think that's what it's called, yeah. An auto-enrolment scheme is still a money purchase pension, but it's a little bit different. That It's a scheme that's been set up by the UK government, which is basically to encourage people of working age to pay into a pension. So it was basically because they had a big concern that there was going to be a massive pension deficit um, in years to come, so they're trying to do something about it now. So... The minimum contribution that you'll be paying in is 4% of your earnings, but your employer will also be paying in 3% of your earnings, and you'll also get an extra 1% of tax relief. So you've basically doubled your money before it's even been invested. So I've got some facts here for you today about some pensions, and I'm interested to see how close you get to the answers and whether our listeners think the same as you or something different. 
So my first question for you today is what percentage of the UK adult population don't have a pension? Oh, that's a hard one, Becky. What do you think? I'm going to say... I'm going to say it's pretty much 50-50. I reckon half do, half don't. Oh, um, I reckon it's going to be less than that. I would have said, I would have agreed with you a few years ago before they brought in the auto-enrolment legislation, mm. but I reckon uh, about 25% of the population don't have one. Actually, uh, either way of that. So one of you is a bit high and one a bit low. The answer is actually 35%. So that means 35% of people are going to be fully reliant on the state pension, which is currently just over £9,000. So I'm not sure about you, but do you think £9,000 would be enough to live on in retirement? Not comfortably, no. Uh, Not if I want to do all the things that I want to do in retirement, definitely not. Exactly. People normally want to go on holiday and do all sorts of things. To me, I think that's going to be a very scrimp and save retirement and doing a very basically as little as possible to get by. I I think you might be right there, Emma. So how about this one? What do you think the average size pension value is in the UK? I'm going to be on the optimistic side here. I'm going to go for £75,000. How about you, Julie? Oh, I think that's a little bit too optimistic for me. Um, I would say... It's quite a hard one. Um, I'm going to go for about... Uh, £40,000? Surprisingly, you're both too high on this one. Oh, blimey. That's not very promising. (laughs) I was way out then, hey? (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. So the average size pension value is £21,441. If you think of an average adult working 40 hours a week on minimum wage at the moment, they'd be earning just over £18,000. So what we're saying is... Just over a year's salary has got to last your entire retirement. Yeah, not not good, is it, Emma? Not really, is it? So how about this final one I've got for you today? What amount of money do over half of the population believe is a comfortable amount to live on in retirement? Well, looking at those figures, I'm hoping it's going to be quite a low number. So, um... I'm not sure, really. Um... I don't know, what, £25,000? Yeah, I think I'd just go slightly higher and say £30,000 a year. So this is where I'm going to shock you both. Actually, people think they need £100,000 to retire. What, not in a year? No, £100,000 to last their entire retirement. Well, that's not going to get them very far. Looking at the figures you were talking earlier, we're talking, what, just over twenty, just under £20,000 a year. That's, that's five years. So really, if you're retiring at 67 or 68, that's sort of 72 years old, and then you've run out of money. Exactly. Then you're going to be reliant on that state pension again of about £9,000. So in reality, you actually need a considerable size pension pot to last your entire retirement. So best to start saving early and putting in as much as you can possibly afford and also making sure it's obviously invested somewhere sensibly as well to be growing ready for your retirement. So when you get to retirement, what happens with your money then? How, how do you go about getting it out of your pension? So when it comes to taking money out of your pension, you can actually take 25% of the value tax-free. Mm. So say you had £100,000 in there like most of the population think is what you should need, you'd actually get £25,000 of that out completely tax-free and you could take that as a lump sum or you could take it over a period of time and then the rest of your money that you take out you'll be taxed on at your marginal rate. So if you're a basic rate taxpayer, you'll be paying 20% tax on what you take out. I should also note at this point that you can't access your pension until you reach 55. So earlier on we said about you can pay um, money into a pension for a child. You can definitely do that, but they would not be able to access any of it until they reach 55 under current legislation. Um, So when you say marginal rate of tax, what, what do you mean by that? Sorry, I should be really simple here. What I mean is that it'll be taxed as income the same as your your wages would be at the moment. Ah, right, I get it. So I get 25% free, Yeah, which I can do what I want with it. So holiday, car, whatever. Yes, you can. And then I get tax on the rest of it. So can I take it all as a lump sum or do I have to take it out as an income 
I mean, what, what are my options? You can do whichever you prefer, but obviously you just need to be careful because if you take out too much in one year, you won't necessarily be paying a basic rate tax of 20%. You could be pushed into the next threshold and the amount of tax you could be paying could be 40%, 45%, depending on how much you take all at once. Oh, right. Okay. Well, that's certainly food for thought, Emma. Thank you. Remember, we've only touched on the absolute basics of pensions today. There's plenty more elements that I'm going to share with you on this recipe, but we'll be covering those in a future episode. And with that, we've completed today's recipe. We hope you have enjoyed following along with us today and cooking yourself one recipe closer to a financially secure future. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, you can head over to www.recipeforfinancialsuccess.co.uk where you can find out more information and a full list of ingredients from today's recipe. For more hints, tips and tasters, find us on Facebook at Your Recipe for Financial Success. If you'd like to get more involved, share your own experiences and learn from a friendly community on a similar journey to you, why not join us in our new Facebook group, The Money Compass, where we will support you to navigate your way to financial success. Thank you for listening and see you next time.